everyone, welcome back to the Geek Evolution Omnibus. It's Omnibus 15. I'm Captain Logan. I'm Eric. And Eric and I have a plethora, ridiculous amount of things to talk to you about today, including uh, Luke Cage Season 2, which I'm really excited to talk about. We're yep. going to do a little bit of spoiler talk later on about Ant-Man and the Wasp. And uh, what else have we got going on, Eric? We're going to review War of Jokes and Riddles. Yep. And Eric is going to briefly talk about all five Mission Impossible films before the new you know one. You know really funny? Yeah. I don't even know when the new one comes out. It's next week. Is it next or is week? It, or or did it already week? come out? No, it hasn't come out okay, yet. Okay. We're, we're close. I uh, have no idea when that comes out. Eric's been on this weird Mission Impossible kick. Uh, well, I just started watching them. I was, uh, well, because I, I think I mentioned on a previous show, I was like, I'm thinking about maybe trying to watch all those before the movie, and I... It, it was way easier than I thought it would be. I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to time you. I'm going to put like a time limit on you and just be like... Uh, I'm going to go way too long on two. Two is really? going to be the one I'm too long on. I'm going to be like, uh, how, how much of these five movies can Eric talk about in like, I don't know, I can do one, three, four, and five really easily. I think quickly. I think... This too, is too problematic or is it just... I have a lot to say because everyone hates it and I think it's... Possibly like an avant-garde masterpiece in a certain way. That's we'll talk hilarious. About, we'll talk about. We'll talk I'm about. really looking forward to that. Uh, Eric and I also both watched the 007 film for this time, which is on Your Majesty's Secret Service, and look forward to that because I think that's going to be a really fun conversation. I agree. As well. Uh, okay, so uh, this show is weird because it is the week that my third kid was born. Uh, my my wife and I uh, just had a baby. His name is Michael Logan. This one was slashing this time. And when I say Michael Logan, I mean Logan is, is his middle name because for people oh, I didn't who don't know, yeah, yeah, oh, that's we, cool. we gave him Logan again. Um, but <laughs> it would have been really funny if we just did it with all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's Logan, and then people on the channel would just think that was their last name. Yeah. But no, my real last name is actually Williamson. For anybody that doesn't know, when I go by Captain Logan on the channel, um, I'm sure for a lot of people that'll be the first time they've ever heard of that. That's right, uh, true. But if you're on Facebook, for some you, people, you, this you might be that. the first time they've ever seen you. Well, that's, that's possible. You know, have I ever told you that story about the guy that on a superhero rewind was like, when are you going to show your face? Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I made that joke. Oh, okay, and I'm like, <laughs> um, I do that a lot more often than the other thing, actually. Yep. Uh, you know, if you look at the off-the-cuff content. But anyway, uh, so yeah, Michael Logan, he was born on uh, Monday morning at 7 o'clock. And I, if you don't mind me telling the story, he's because like it's this fascinating. Uh, yeah, no, he's actually quite a bit bigger than we expected because my wife delivered two weeks early. Uh, we didn't expect this to happen. I yet. thought it was early. It was it was two weeks early. Yeah, and I was uh, really uh, worried about this show because Sarah really looked like she might go at any moment. And you I, said and it. I, I you thought it was gonna be early. it's going to be early, and Sarah was like maybe a week early, and I was positive it would be earlier than that. And I was totally right. Like I almost wish I'd made a bet on that or something. So I, I was. I mean, I'm kidding. But I was bet against you. I was totally right about that. No, if you if you looked at her, no one. You know, <laughs> uh, and it was like her biology had a different due date than the than the hospital did, and and they can't be off on that the way the math works. Like mm. like apparently it's not possible to to, to flub up a due date. And uh, so, so he, he was two weeks early, uh, but he was an eight-pound baby at two weeks early. Wow. Uh, if she had carried to turn, he might have been ten pounds. Um, wow. I, I asked the nurses about that, and they were like, oh, no, I think that's right. I think he would have been ten pounds. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. But I want to tell the story real quick because it's because it's funny. Uh, Brandon and I, that night on Sunday, went to see Skyscraper, which I'll also talk about real briefly later. I don't know what I have to say about that. But I, I went and saw that movie, and about what I expected. And... Um, we got back. Well, I mean, you saw the second trailer. We got, right. That's a good point. Yeah, we've pretty much seen that. It's it is more preposterous than that. That trailer second trailer turned me from wanting to see that film in theaters. Just I because saw, they showed you too much of it. Yeah, I was like, well, I don't need to see that movie in theaters now. And yeah, it was that movie, but kind of like Jurassic House, like more <laughs> preposterous. <laughs> okay. uh, but not as fun as the preposterousness of, of Jurassic, Jurassic House. House. That's uh, anyway, I'm already saying the three things I have to say about that movie. Uh, so we go see uh, uh, Skyscraper, almost a Jurassic House. We go see uh, Skyscraper, and uh, we get we get back, and uh, Sarah's water breaks two minutes after I get back. Like, I, I went and ran to the bathroom. Uh, as I'm walking out, Sarah's rushing to get into the bathroom, and uh, she's got to go to the hospital. And I, uh, I called Brandon because he had, or I was about to call Brandon because he had just left the house. And uh, you know, Brandon, like if he could, if he could help him be involved in any way with that, yeah. the, the craziness of that happening right at that moment, the yeah. coincidence of that, he's gonna want to be in on You'd it, right? Also never so stop hearing about it. 
that's right, and I won't, especially because of how crazy it was. So I thought about calling him before I had a chance to dial the phone. I uh, because because I'm still I'm still waiting for Sarah. She's trying to decide if she's sure that's what's happened, but but it was right. So I uh, my phone rings and it's Brandon and he says I'm at the other end of your street. I just hit a cat. <laughs> I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, this is Black Cat. I just hit it. It ran off. I can't find it. I don't know where it is. I have since seen the only Black Cat I know about in the neighborhood. It seems fine. I don't think he he injured it. That's if he a real hit girl. a cat. Uh, but either that or there's some like other cat I don't know about that got hit by Brandon. But anyway, I digress. So uh, so Brandon comes back, and uh, j but just the, the bizarre coincidence of this, like my wife's gonna deliver this baby uh, the same night that. We saw Skyscraper and the cat got hit. If I had been an hour later getting home, uh, I either would have missed it, somebody else would have had to drive her, or like my phone would have lit up and I would have left the theater. But I think my, my phone was close enough, I would have seen it. So, uh, But isn't that crazy? Yep. It's a really strange night. So anyway, uh, I mostly mention all of that, A, because that story's weird, and B, uh, because Obviously, I uh, was not expecting that to happen as early as it has, so uh, the Daredevil Rewind is uh, even more late than it was. I haven't had a chance all week to work on it. Um, I just, uh, full disclosure, I've not touched it since before Michael was born. So I uh, had to watch some things for this omnibus and obviously take care of my wife and help with the kids and all that stuff. So um, that is the only thing I'll be working on channel-wise this week. So hopefully I'll look forward to that real soon in the next few days. Um, I've got a couple, let me just do a few more announcements real quick. I've got a couple of spots left for the creative writing workshop. Uh, Eric, we have filled that up real fast. We already have 15 students. That's awesome. Uh, which is crazy. I'm really excited about it. And I can't tell you how ecstatic I am uh, for, for this for this, uh, for this this class. And uh, so we filled up uh, what has turned into the first section on almost like the first day. Like we had six or seven on the first day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I don't want to turn away a bunch of people if people start coming out of the woodwork for it. And so uh, I decided to open a second section. So we're going to have uh, two meetings with different groups is my plan right now. Uh, but I am going to cap it off at 18. So uh, I, I can only hold nine in a Google Plus chat. So uh, the second, th so that determines the the uh, size of the section. So there'll be there'll be nine people. So if there's anybody else that is really interested in working with me in the creative writing workshop, like I said, I still have right now as we speak three more seats left for that. And uh, you can come in and show off uh, your work and have me and a group uh, critique it for you and give you some constructive criticism. Uh, I will also give you a written analysis uh, of, well, I say analysis, a written critique of your, of your work, and uh, it won't be like a rewind, uh, <laughs> but I'll give, you a, I'll, I'll give you like a one page critique of your work, and uh, I'm also going to be doing monthly um, um, lectures and things of that nature. So uh, anyway, that's it for that, um, we are out of, we, we've also ran out of request spots for, um, on Patreon, and uh, we're bursting at the seams on that, like, do, like, we're doing 12 right now, it's honestly, like, more than we can deal with, but that's where I've capped it off at, so, uh, we have 12 requests, a regular requests going on, if you want to do a one-time request, you can still do that, uh, using the email address in the description, and I will give you instructions about how to, uh, make the $20 donation for request happen, and if, I uh, just keep checking Patreon if you're interested in doing that regularly, and a spot will eventually open up, so, uh, keep looking at that. Uh, Jurassic House, speaking of, uh, t-shirts are available right now for, for, uh, Jurassic House. We've already had a few people, uh, buy those shirts, Eric. We've already got some takers on that, and I gotta order one, uh, because that design was was uh, fantastic. I, I want to order a bunch of the shirts we have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because Danny's designs are wonderful. Uh, but yeah, I just I, I mentioned Jurassic House to him. I don't even think he's seen the movie yet. <laughs> But I sent him pictures of the Indominus Rex, and I was like, because he made he made one logo that looked really cool that has that house design that you have right now, uh, but it still had the regular Jurassic Park, uh, you know, T Rex, and I was like, I was like, dude, it's got to be the Indominus Rex because it's got to be clear that we're making fun of Are you that about movie. This, this, this week? I what? am, yeah. Mm -hmm. It just it just hit me. I was like, oh yeah, you read that book. I am, yeah. Uh, and, and I thought about Lost World. I thought about pre yeah. I, I just started reading that. I, I I thought about pre-recording it, but I'd actually kind of like to talk to you about it, sure. just because you have read it. Before. I remember when I was fourteen. Yeah. And um, it's uh, it, 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 it's there are in interesting and amusing things about that. It'll be more fun to talk about it with with another person. But anyway, so a Jurassic a Jurassic House T-shirts, Red Bubble, Geek Solution, tell your friends. Uh, and that is going to be it for announcements. So uh, let's go ahead and go on to fan art right now. We're going to skip trivia 
idea this week because we have so much stuff to talk about. Uh, we're going to go on to fan art, and then we're going to do new acquisitions here in the intro video. So stick with us, and we'll show you some cool stuff. Uh, Eric, today's fan art comes once again from Manuel Alanis, and he gave us another couple of uh, Silver Surfer and Galactus pictures. Ooh, that's uh, cool. there's, Nova. there's Silver Surfer and Nova. That's, that was a cool pick, and I like these pencil drawings, and it looks like uh, he's he's uh, coloring with colored pencils. And uh, there's Galactus. Oh, I really like that Galactus face. The silver Surfer right in front of him. Yeah, I like and that that's a really interesting angle. Yeah. No, I, I really like that. It's cool. It reminds me of Mobius a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So that does it for fan art. Uh, thanks a bunch to you, Manuel. And let's launch right this minute. Uh, stay right here. We're not going anywhere to new acquisitions. And uh, Eric, why don't you uh, show us off some things sure. that you got over the last few some weeks? Things. I went to a local uh, half price and I got uh, Dick Taylor Soldier Spy and Smiley's People, which is the first and third of this trilogy. Half the Price Carlos Books Soldier. was having uh, a really a really cool sale, so yeah. we both went and made sure and buy some stuff. Well, and I also got Queen Country Four. Oh, well, speaking of, second. I have another thing upstairs actually that I bought that there that I forgot about. I'll go get that in a minute. Okay, um, I've always meant to read these, but I've always been afraid that they're going to be really boring, so I haven't read them yet. But they just have these dope covers, and like I kind of just want to buy this this run of Le, uh, Le novels, whether I've read them or not, because they look so cool. Yeah, they're really cool. Um, but. Uh, yeah, like Lacare is the opposite of James Bond. He is the pencil and paper work. Like this is the this is what spying's really like, kind of a uh, kind of thing. What's funny is the Queen and Country cover is not that different from and the Queen and Country from that. is also very boring. like not boring. <laughs> it's it's interesting, which is what I'm hoping these these are. Yeah. But Queen and Country is very realistic, very insanely well researched. Um, I have four, which means three is the only one I'm missing. But Queen Country is weird because you you read. So four doesn't actually collect any of the original comics. It collects something called the declassifieds, which are backstories. Mm -hmm. You have to read one of those before you can read a certain arc in the main book. But also, you can't read the last arc of the main book without reading the novel that takes place in between. So I'm trying to get everything set up so I can read that series correctly. You gotta get the reading order. Yeah. Um, I also just went and bought all of Secret Six. Because I used to, ha I used to have actually most of this in singles, which is weird for me. But I was reading it while it was coming out, um, so I had, had that brief period. You remember way back when uh, you and I did a show with uh, Manos, I think, doing uh, every time I was on there, I think Secret Six was one of my packs. It was, yeah, yeah. It was uh, the, the what was it? Semi monthly poll. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I actually had most of this book in singles and a couple of trades. Uh, they re-released it into. These big volumes, this is all of it. This is four volumes, this is all of Secret Six. And uh, I saw that it looked like they were going out of print. Because I bought the first one, it came out, and I've either lent it to somebody or misplaced it or didn't make it to, to, to Kansas, I don't know. So I had to rebuy the first one. But uh, I saw it looked like there was only a couple copies of each book left, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not having that. I have to have Secret Six. So I got all of that. To be fair, I do imagine that at some point would go back into print. I would too, but I want to I wanna be on the safe side. Yeah. Um, because that is one of my favorite comic runs of all time. Like I, I just, I love. Because there are a couple of characters in that team that have like flashpoints of popularity. Deadshot's the big one. De Deadshot, yeah, and Bane, and Bane. But I don't know if most people know Bane is in. Well, that's why I could see them like putting those out again because Bane has some big story and they just put out a bunch of Bane stuff. The last, the last two issues of, of but Secret maybe not because I know he's kind of comedic in that. So. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't read it, but I get the sense that he's kind of... Would it be, is it safe to say that, that Bane is comic relief in that, or is everybody kind of a comedic character in that book? It's just like a dark, twisted, funny book. Like, it's a dark comedy book. So, like, Bane is horrifying. Um, but Gail Simone kind of talks about how, like, she, she went and she talked to Chuck Dixon about what is Bane, and Bane is an absolutist. So she's... It's a more comic take on that character, but it's not like... It's not like modern Harley Quinn where it's a completely different character. Like, it is still Bane. Mm -hmm. It's just in a slightly wackier setting. Um, but, like, can the books are so dark, like, he doesn't feel that far. Can you compare that series to Superior Foes? Or are they very, very different things? It's darker than Superior Foes. It's a similar brand of comedy, but okay. it's it's darker. I, and I only read the first trade of Superior Foes. I didn't read all of Superior Foes. I've only read a couple Superior of Foes might get a little bit darker, but, like, we go to real dark places in, in, in Secret Six. That's, that's part of what I like so much about it, is the, the, the light and the dark. That's the I mean, her 52 back roll is horrifying. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so the last thing I got is, I got 
It says season one, but it's the only one that exists. It's all, it, it's all of the original Giant Quest, which I watched the first episode of and was blown Hanna away. Hanna Barbera did a lot of that, where they would put out like one or two seasons, and you would think that it had like a fifteen year one because they just kept airing them. Mm -hmm. But like the the first one of Scooby Doo is only like two or three seasons. Too. It's only two seasons. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I won it. Um, uh, well, it's weird because it says the first season. There is no second season. Yeah, that I don't understand. Yeah, just the complete series. There are more shows, but they're not more seasons. No, that makes no sense. Uh, so I watched the first episode of this, and my mind was kind of blown at how good this is, and I'm excited to go watch through this because I've never just gone down, gone through Giant Quest. So, yeah. I guess since you brought that up, I'll, this is not a thing to show, but I guess I'll just re uh, briefly mention that I subscribed to Boomerang, uh, and I was going to talk about this on Primetime Crisis, but we're only doing Luke Cage, and it wouldn't really make, make sense to, to, to uh, tack that on, so I'll just mention it here. But um, I got that for my kids because they've never seen Flintstones or Jetsons. And At this a lot point, of that stuff, most kids have. Yeah. Scooby Doo stays, stays in the in the pop culture. Maybe not for but that's because they for, keep putting stuff out yeah, for it. Yeah. I mean, they, they haven't. They put out a little bit of stuff here and there for Flintstones and Jetsons. Um, they did that that. Uh, WWE crossover yeah. with, with the Jetsons, but yeah, which is weird. Yeah, that's it, it's strange. But anyway, um, but I got that, and uh, we like it so far. Uh, it's wonderfully inexpensive. It's five bucks a month for forty bucks a year, which is really nice. That's great. And uh, they don't have a ton, so I mean, they, it's not like an unfair amount of material, but it's a little bit less than I might have expected. Uh, so like the price point is really fair, mm -hmm. but uh, it's like a whole bunch of Warner Brothers cartoons, it's a ton of Looney Tunes, and then a bunch of the later peripheral series. So like, obviously Tiny Tunes and that stuff isn't there because uh, somebody else has that, I yeah. think Hulu has that right now. Yeah. Um, but they have it's kind of the same thing that DC Universe is gonna be dealing with, where they'd love to have everything, but Netflix has some exclusivity, and, mm. and CWC probably has some things that they can't have, I don't know about that one, but anyway. Uh, but. It's a lot of Hanna-Barbera, it's a lot of Warner Brothers, they have, um, like, the Looney Tunes show, and they have, um, what, what is it, they have uh, Duck Dodgers, which I watched the first episode of and liked quite a bit. Uh, it has one of the best intros I've ever seen of anything, it's great. Uh, but, anyway, so, uh, that's, that's been fun. Um, going back to Jetsons is interesting, because it's way more satirical than I realized, and, uh... Yeah, based on what you told me, the movie is not as weird as people... Even including myself, think it is no. I Where it's think like, they, oh, the Jetsons is all of a sudden about I something. I think they doubled down on, on uh, just just on what kind of like dark satire is there already because it doesn't play dark in a sitcom with a laugh track. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people forget that those shows had laugh tracks. Oh, and, it's obnoxious. You no, know, you know what it is. Uh, uh, Scooby Doo has a laugh track. They laugh at every. They think everything is funny, but even then, not funny <laughs> things. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. But Jetsons and like, I think. I think the part of the thing is, if you haven't watched it in a really long time and you watch the pilot, you're like, oh wow, this is like about something, and it's it, like a, a, a criticism of what they of what we think we're coming into with the push button age and of uh, over reliance of technology and people getting lazy and people getting entitled and um, thinking that they're working really hard when they're not doing anything. Like, uh, you know, George Jetson comes home and he's like, uh, he's like, I had to push the button three times today. It was a really hectic day. Uh, and, uh, it's it, you know, it plays really funny. I think you get numb to it after a while. Like, I think after a few episodes of that, they are kind of doing the same jokes. Well, and, and how much can you run with that? Yeah, absolutely. And so then it, it, the, the creativity of the show becomes more like what Flintstones was. And there's some satire in Flintstones, too. Um, certainly of just, like, you know, mundanity of, uh, like, you know, 60s life and stuff. But, um, and, and Jetsons has that also, uh, but it obviously it goes, you know, the other direction with it. But they, um, but I think you know, the, the, um, the creativity of that show becomes kind of what it was with Jetsons, where it's just like, uh, how do we wrap up something that everyone's familiar with in this aesthetic? And so that becomes kind of the fun of it. And that's what everyone remembers. But I had kind of forgotten that there was something at the core of it, uh, you know, idea-wise. And it kind of makes that uh, that miniseries that DC put out um, make a lot keep more sense because they really ran with it. I have it all. I haven't read it yet, so I do want to review that at some point. I um, have I ever told you what I think of the Jetsons? I don't know. So, I theoretically don't like the Jetsons because when I was a kid, they ran the Jetsons for twenty four hours, and I watched as much of as I mean, it felt like twenty four hours. But I was like, I'm done with the Jetsons. At like nine years old, I, was I like, never want to see this again. I never need to see this again. 
Well, I, now that that stuff gets kind of repetitive. And I haven't gone back to it since. I think you should. I would like to. I think I you should go back to. and watch just one or two episodes. Because I like that. I, I like the Flintstones. I, there's a lot of that stuff I really would like to go Another back to. The thing I was surprised by was continuity. Really? The, yeah. Like, From across episodes? I wish yeah, that dies real quick, right? Like, well, I don't know. The, the thing is, a lot of sitcoms at that time had more of that than we remember. and That's true when you look at Friends. Like, Friends is arkier than any... Like, like even moving forward, Friends is arkier than most TV shows at the time. Well, sure. Most but, dramatic TV shows. But Friends, I remember being that. I'm saying, when you go back to the 50s and 60s, a lot of those shows had more of a sense of continuity. But, I just meant, I think sitcoms are always like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Sure. Like, like, because I, I, like, Cosby I, shows like that. Like, but like, I, think, I think... I think at one time they weren't. What I mean is, like, like uh, I don't think there was... Well, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think there was as much of that with, like, the Andy Griffith show. Um, I assume Lucy has some of that, but I'm not sure. But in, Lucy has some, but, but uh, like, the big one uh, where I was really surprised when I, when I went back to it, I, that, that it, it has almost, like, stories that go over episodes, even, was Beverly Hillbillies. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And it holds up really well, and you should go back to it because it's really interesting and it's really really funny. Like it, it has stayed funny. I've never watched it. Have you not? I've never. Watched it, it, it has stayed very funny. Um, it always felt a little too close to home for me. Where I oh, grew up really? and the way the kind of people I grew up with, I was like, I don't, I don't need to watch that. Let me show you some of that at some point. Sure, because sure. it's surprisingly funny and it was surprisingly risque. Uh, but anyway, so like Jetsons uh, has a kind of like. Uh, origin esque episode. I mean, uh, with, with its with its pilot, like they they introduced Rose the robot in the episode, which I didn't realize. Oh, interesting. And then uh, their dog is not they, like Astro's not there until like four or five. I did not know. I that. didn't know that. So um, there's there's things like that where they and and then there's like that um that alien uh, guy with the springy legs that they add later. He was in the movie. Huh. Um, I don't remember him off the top of my head. But he's not there at the beginning. Is he, is he little? Is yeah. He, yeah, I think he might only he's be like in the movie. Boingy and No, I thought he was in the show, but I could be wrong. I could I, be wrong. I don't, I don't Obviously, I don't remember that show. Yeah, no, hey, no. I didn't hey, mean to Hey, I watched 24 this. hours of that show. I think I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, I want to I want to physically show some other things. Uh, here's recent pop acquisitions. Um, Eric, check out this bad girl. Ooh, she's sparkly. She is, and uh, does it does it chip on your it fingers? It does, and that's it? really irritating. And uh, this is the only one I've ever bought that I kind of wish I'd left in the box because of that. I uh, how do you, and I've got I bought like uh, Christmas ornaments that do this too. How do you not have some kind of a coat of something that keeps? the glitter from coming off of the figure. That's, but I've never bought an action figure that glitters in your hand like yeah. that. Uh, but yeah, this was a Hot Topic exclusive, and uh, it, the first Batman or Batgirl pop I bought in quite a while. Yeah. Um, this is the first new one I've seen in a while. So anyway, um, but... There's a bunch of not new ones that you still have to get. But I, Yeah, no, that's true. Um, and I already have like 75 oh, or 80. You did get the Just League one. Yeah, I finally bought him. Or as I call him, Night Owl. Yeah, yeah, because that's what he looks like. That's what I said in the first trailer for Justice League. He, he looks like 9L. Uh, and then I also got the uh, Weird Al variant, and I think this one Is that is, fat? This is fat, yeah. It looks like fat. Uh, Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, he looks great. That's great. That's really But yeah, I have the other Weird Al. Um, I showed him off at one point, and... Uh, With like Rogers. And, and this one, I yeah, and this one I think was, if not Hot Topic exclusive, it was FYE. FYE, I think. Was this one? Uh, but yeah, he was another exclusive. I wish they would put some Burger World lately. <laughs> you ain't fat. You ain't nothing. But I wish uh, they would put out some more of these. It would be nice to get a whole weird out line, honestly, because there's a lot of costumes Jedi you could do. One. And it'd be nice to get what's that? The Jedi one. The Jedi one would be good. Uh, it, it would be, although that's interesting because then you wonder if it has to be a bobblehead. Uh, that's true. And uh, but then. Like, like even outside of things that would be otherwise licensed, there's still other things you could do. Like, you could do a UHF one, and you could do a, uh, you know, modern long hair yeah. without, without yeah, the mustache yeah, one. Yeah, I, I, I really wish they'd do that. Uh, but yeah, there's poodle hat. There's lots of cool stuff. Yeah, you do poodle hat. Mm -hmm. No, there's lot. There's lots of cool ones that you could do. Uh, and he, he has he has lots of. Guys. I guess, I, I I guess Amish Paradise would be one people would want. Amish Paradise. You could just do the Riding with Scissors one. Yeah, just that cover. Like you could you could be cool new cover ones. Yeah. 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 Uh, but anyway, so there are the pops. And then uh, also at the mall, I got these NES coasters. Interesting. Um, cool. For our living room, because we have all of our uh, video games in the living room right now. And uh, yeah, I sent my wife a message and was like, Jason really thinks we need these coasters. And then we left the mall before I saw Sarah's uh, message. We got in the car and she was like, yeah, go get those. I was like, all right. So we had to walk all the way back to the mall to go get them. 
Uh, and then, Eric, uh, I got Sonic Mania Plus. Uh, I have, of course, had to rebuy Sonic Mania, but uh, this is one of the best re-releases, especially for a like recent thing that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. uh, it is surprisingly worth a rebuy, and uh, I want to talk about is it for a little bit. Is that much extra stuff? Um, there is a decent amount of extra stuff, and they do everything they can to make it worth your while because I get the sense that that, uh, that if not Sega, like Whitehead probably really wished they could have done a physical release in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, I get the sense that he's like me and wants to have like a physical copy of things. And because I mean, they did a collector's edition and it didn't have a physical copy, and that's really weird. But yeah. like the collector mentality was already there, right? And of course, you know, everything was physical media back then. And the big thing everybody wanted was for it somehow to be on a cartridge, mm -hmm. which was, of course, impossible. Yeah. Um, having it on Switch is the closest to a cartridge you can get, because yeah. it's not a disc. Um, but I wanted to, uh, instead of doing a full review on this, I wanted to just talk about it here and mention a few things. Um, so it comes in this uh, cool, irregular-sized box uh, that's a little bit more like the shape of a Sega box. And uh, they do that because it also comes with an art book. Uh, and it was nice that you didn't have to buy any kind of special edition or pre-order or anything for this. It just comes with it. Uh, and still at the $30 price point. Um, nice. Again, it's really impressive. Like th This is the price the game was initially, and it's everything that was there plus the updates. There are two new characters. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, and four-player battle mode now, which we've never had in Sonic, of course. Uh, and then it's got this uh, really cool art book. And um, it also has a reversible cover, uh, and I just have it in the reversible you know, version now, but for the actual regular game case, uh, they have this reversible cover so that it looks like a Genesis game. Oh, I've just always had that. Yeah, yeah. that's what I got. Awesome. Isn't that cool? I wish the box looked like that. Yeah, me too. Uh, but, I mean, you see why they didn't do that, because that would have been confusing, you know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah. it needs to look like it's on the Switch, because well, it's the Switch. I would do that design, but I would have to say Switch instead of Genesis. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, but but anyway, so as far as the uh, actual updates go, um, I should well, and I, let me mention this this first. Um, they made it so that if you didn't want the physical version, you could get the all of the uh, plus updates for five bucks, mm -hmm. which uh, I was really impressed with. I thought you yeah. might have to rebuy it, and um, I went ahead and did that too. I put that on PS4. Oh like wow, five bucks, sure, sure. Uh, So I've got it in two places, especially if I ever wanted to do uh, another stream of it. Which I might do at some point. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and also, like, I wanted to play through Encore mode, uh, which is the big new mode for this. Uh, and Jason wanted to play too, and of course, you can't play Encore mode two players. I mean, you can have the other person play as Tails, but it's not the same. And uh, so I just did the update on the PS4. I've got that in the other room, so we just played at the same time, and uh, that was really cool. But anyway, um, Encore mode is really cool because, like. It would have been nice, I guess, to get like new levels and stuff, but obviously you can't really expect that. The, the game is a year out, mm -hmm. and I want to think that Whitehead is already working on a sequel. And they didn't build a bunch of stuff that they just didn't release. Yeah, ex well, the, and, yeah, and I'm glad you said that, because that's that's the other nice thing about it. Um, Encore mode doesn't feel like a thing that should have been there in the first place. It would have been really strange if it was. Like, that is designed for people that have played the game through already to entice you to want to do it again, mm -hmm. uh, which is really cool. So what is different about Encore mode? Um, so it's it's got... I. Uh, Two new players, which you can characters which you can play with in the regular mode as well. But the uh, but the way the mode is set up is you don't stack men like you usually or, or, or like uh, like like guys like you usually do in um, in Sonic. So like instead of saying um, times three in the corner or however many uh, men you have, it uh, shows you like uh, character faces, and I uh, the the. Like like the way it's organized is differently. It is is, is different. Uh, in 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 a place different. It's actually a little bit harder because of this. Uh, so you start off with um, I think one or two. I can't remember. I think I think you are playing with somebody else. And uh, you've got Sonic or you've got Knuckles. You've got Tails. And then and then the, the two new characters are, are they all uh, new characters or are they just new to the game? No, they're just new to the game, but they're kind of obscure. So it's Mighty Armadillo. Oh, uh, from uh, from Chaonix? Yeah, from Chaonix. That should have been SPL. Yeah, best. and yeah, I thought so too. But uh, <laughs> he he he, uh, and he plays differently. I don't. I think in going back to Chaonix, I don't think he had the same power. Um, it, his ability in this is he's got like a ground pound, and I don't remember that. I don't think that's what he had. But it's been a long time since I played Chaonix, so I don't remember. Um, 
I mean, it's been like a year. Like I, I, I did buy it again. And I yeah. it Somewhat recently, but I, it's it's been a while. Anyway, I remember what everybody. I remember what Espio does. I remember what Charlie B does, but not that. And then the other one is a character I wasn't even familiar with. Uh, who named uh, Ray the Flying Squirrel. Who I I didn't I I was not familiar with. Apparently, both of those characters. So Mighty Armadillo predates the Chaotix by by like two or three years, okay. which I didn't know. Both of these characters were in a game called Sega Sonic the Hedgehog that was only released in arcades and I think only in Japan. Like, Whitehead really knows his stuff. Like, he goes to these really weird, uh, obscure things. And uh, Ray was this character I've never seen before. And he's now my favorite in the game. Uh, wow. It, it, he has this really cool uh, ability, this, this glide ability that's real different than Knuckles' glide ability. So it's like halfway between a glide and a fly. Um, where And it's weird because we now have a straight up flying character with tails. Um, I mean, obviously he can't go all the way to the top of the screen, but you know he's he's he's, he's got his flying ability, and then you've got you got knuckles that just glides across the screen, and then and, and then this guy he he uh, like has uh, in in you know air lift with with wind, so he goes like this, and it's hard to explain without looking at it, but it's really fun, and I uh, like you you can kind of get around things that no other character lets you get around with it, which is cool. Um, but the thing that can be kind of um, problematic about it is you're you're in the air for a long time, but you're not spinning, so it's easier to get hit by things. Uh, when Knuckles glides, he's got his knuckles out, so he can run into guys. But uh, Ray doesn't do that. So if you're gliding when you're using him, you do get hit by things. So you have to be careful about that. But uh, it gives you so much more maneuverability. It's kind of a good trade-off. Uh, so anyway, that was really cool. And uh, but the way it works is, um, you have to keep uh, like like trying to get uh, all five of your guys, and you can only have and you can't have duplicates. So you can you can have like all five in your queue, and you're playing with two at the same time. So sort of like with Sonic Two and Sonic Three, uh, you can use another character running with you like they're tails, but they're not tails. You can switch between them, sort of like Donkey Kong Country. Okay. Uh, but you can't use any of the other guys in your queue until somebody dies and they get replaced. Okay. Uh, and once, like I said, once you get up to five, that's how many you can have. So if you start losing guys, and bosses can be really uh, uh, problematic for this, once you start losing guys, uh, you have to, uh, you know, try to try to find more, and that's with the new bonus stage the Whitehead created specifically for this, which is a combination of like three different bonus stages. And they're really obscure, so uh, it's it's a pinball machine, and it's loosely based on the pinball machine mini game that's in Sonic Spinball. And then uh, it's also mixed with a thing in Knuckles Chaotix of all things. Never thought we'd see Knuckles Chaotix up in this, but we finally have that. And it's so cool. Uh, cause I always feel like the one person on the planet that knows that game, and so it was really exciting exciting to see that. And um, it's this claw machine, and that's how you get guys in Knuckles Chaotix. There's a claw machine, and uh, the claw machine in this, uh, it took me a while to get really good at it. At first, it felt like a real-world claw machine, because it was really hard to pick guys up. Uh, but that's, like, the only way to get guys. And uh, See, I, I guess there's occasionally, like, like one-up boxes um, that would be, like, a normal one-up, but they, but they give you guys, but that's rare. There's obviously yeah, not as many Just hearing about that, my immediate issue would be that you can't stack guys. Because you can only get new guys once you've lost guys. Yeah. There's no way to, you know... Well, no, that's not true. Okay. Um, well, I mean, you just, you have a you have a limit. You can only hold five. Okay. So like, once you have all five of your guys, you can't get any more guys. Okay. I guess that makes sense. But it's really easy to get continues. Okay. So that helps. Sure. But I do find myself starting over a lot more often. But anyway, um, the, the stages are uh, remixed... Or I guess they're not remixed. They're the same stages, but uh, they have new color palettes, which are really super cool looking, and uh, it's surprisingly worth playing it, playing it over again. So, nice. yeah, um, it's great. I'm really excited about it. Uh, that's gonna be all the stuff I'm gonna talk about today. I was gonna go through some comics, but I think I'll do well. I'll do these real quick. Um, I haven't read this yet. Did you know about these uh, prelude issues? These wedding prelude things? No. Um, yeah, I only bought this one because it's got the Riddler in it, but uh, I haven't read that yet. Um. I thought it was weird that they did that. I have things to say, but I can't, because... Yeah, I, we'll do it later. Um, yeah. I've read it now, too. So, you have read yeah, it? Yeah, so okay. we'll, 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 talk, we'll talk about okay. that. Um, 
No, I and that's why I paused for a second. I think we both almost said the same thing at the same time. But um, yeah, this gets weirder after you've read it. Uh, but anyway, so there's that. Um, I'm reading. It's been a while since I've gone through any uh, new issues, so I'll just mention some stuff that I'm reading right now. But um, I've got. Oh, they're doing, Eric. They're doing even a third next gen mirror universe series. There must be something really well. I, I guess they're just going doing more and more of those. Um, I saw this on solicitations for this week, uh, Terra Incognita, and I was like, well, that can't be any good, and I didn't order it, but I have been buying these mirror things, so I probably will, but anyway, so, uh, but I'm reading uh, Ninja Turtles Urban Legends, which, yeah, I don't know if we've talked about this on camera at all. I'm not sure, can I look through those while you're talking? Yeah, sure, but these are, oh, that's three, but yeah, um, but these are the Image Ninja Turtles books from the 90s, and they are recollecting them in singles, and then the original team is going to come back and finish it, because it was never finished, and they're going to put out singles to conclude it. I don't know how many issues it ultimately is. Uh, I think they gave a number when they first announced it, right? I don't know if they're coming back and doing like three or four more, or if they're... Surely they're not capping off with like one issue, right? No, I want to say I heard four, but I, I won't swear to that. Okay. These well, are cool. Yeah. In that 90s in, way. In that 90s way, uh, they're real Rob Liefeld-esque. Uh, they're kind of nonsensical. That's Rob Liefeld. They're... Uh, right, <laughs> but... Wise. But I'm talking solely about the art. It's it's better than no, it is better than that. But it's Rob Liefeld esque in that uh, he's obviously the biggest influence on that art style, and uh, the feet look just like Liefeld. Like anytime you see it, you see a full. Girls don't even have somebody. normal feet. No, I mean uh, anybody. Other people do. Oh, sure, sure. People with feet in this. And, yeah, and, and, and soldiers and, and stuff. Yeah, okay. yeah. I saw. I saw there's a shark guy. That's cool. Yeah, there's a shark guy. Uh, he looks like the shark from uh, from uh, Lilo and Stitch. Okay, I've never seen that. But anyway, oh, okay. uh, so these are super uh, violent and ridiculous and crazy, and they're really entertaining. Uh, but they're not traditionally good. I don't think. Um, I've always thought those would probably, never having read them, yeah. but those would probably be what people think the original Ninja Turtles comics are that's, like. That's exactly when, right. When people say, like, no, the original Ninja Turtles comics were really dark and violent, not like the cartoon. Yeah, they're so brutal. They probably think that's what it's... Yeah, and, and this stuff is that. It's just violence for the sake of violence, and uh, it's real gratuitous, but it knows it. And uh, But they're, they're, they're hilarious. Uh, I will review that. As, I keep thinking of things I want to say about that. I will review those down the road. Uh, still reading New Sonic the Hedgehog. It's quite good. Is it? Oh, cool. Uh... Yeah, Robotnik is not Robotnik, or doesn't think he's Robotnik, and he has amnesia, and he's just like a, a really nice, friendly guy who's making a theme park for that children. Like and then, yeah, it's great. <laughs> uh, here's the 25th anniversary uh, Power Rangers special, which I read, and uh, it was fine. It's just I'm tired of six, eight-page Power Rangers stories in these specials. Just like give me a whole really was, good story. Was I was I really good? Have you ever gotten not, like, like Have you gotten like another Zed story? Like I have like not gotten another Zed, Zed story. story. There is one in here with Zed in it. The, the opening story in this is just a regular Mighty Morphin episode. Like it, it doesn't even. It doesn't even feel elevated to what Zoom Power Rangers is. It's just a Mighty Morphin it's episode. Cool it's hilarious. It's oh, just it's a Megazord. Cool. Uh, but I, I, I do think it's worth buying just for this page. That's pretty great. Because <laughs> it's Goldar on the rad bug. And yeah, it's, so is that a blue cover? Great. Did we do the thing we did with 25 again? Where like there's like a green version of the red Oh, version? I don't know that. I don't. You know what? Now that I'm now that I'm saying that, I think the. The closest thing to a Zed story is the story at the back of this, was, which is the Trial of Astronomer. It's actually quite good. Oh, cool! Uh, they have they have this this whole uh, you know identity thing with the girl who was Astronomer and whether or not she should be Kendricks. Uh, no, Kendricks. Kendricks. Yeah, no, that's it's Kendricks. I think that's right, isn't it? Um, I think she might replace Kendricks in Lost Galaxy. It's been a long time. Whether or not <laughs> she should be uh, considered responsible for the things that Astronomer did. Uh, uh, maybe it's not Kendricks. Jason could tell us. It's not Kendricks. No, it's not Kendricks. They talk about Kendricks. Is it uh, Caron? Yes, it's Caron. There you Caron go. Caron replaces yeah. Kendricks because... Kendricks was the yeah. original Pink Galaxy Ranger. Yep. She fell in battle against Psycho Pink. Yep. There it is, right there, yep. playing this day on yep. the page. Um, read that story. It's actually quite okay, cool. I forgot about that. Uh, and then some more Batman. I, so I've read 50. I haven't read some of the issues leading up I to 50 I also yet. read 50 and so did not read I was those. too curious, and I knew Me you too. read it, so I thought we Me could too. review it later. Uh, still buying Turtles Universe. I'm real behind on that right now. Uh, but that one's got Mondo Gecko in it, so that's fun. And then I'm oh, also cool. super behind on is, Daredevil. Is he, is, he, is he modernized, or is he still just, like, Poochie? Uh, 
I don't think we've remodernized them. I think this is just a weird cover. Oh, does does he have? Has he been in the comics before? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mondo is part of the uh, Mutanimals. Oh, okay. He, we've had him for three or four years now. Okay. Yeah, he and Michelangelo are like best friends. That makes sense. Uh, of course they are. And then Ghostbusters crossing over. Uh, just a bunch of stuff I'm stacking that I haven't had a chance to read yet, but I'll review some of this stuff when it's finished. Uh, more Power Rangers. That's cool. More Go Go. Uh, and Bane Conquest just ended. Wow. So we'll have to read that and review it sometime in the near future uh, and see if, what that's like because. It's uh, it's it's weird because it's uh, who am I thinking of? It's, uh, it's Graham Nolan and it's uh, and it's Chuck Dixon, yeah. And uh, they're just doing. I mean, I haven't read any of this yet. I just I've, I've just skimmed a, a little bit of it, and uh, it looks like early '90s Batman Bane comics. Uh, and they're basically just forgetting everything we've done with Bane since then. But we're still using the current Rebirth bat suit, and I don't like that. I just wish it could look like their stuff, because it's basically out of continuity anyway. It's not like it's going to inform anything, right? And that's right? weird with 50, right? What's that? And that's weird with 50, right? What, that is? If that's in continuity? Being Conquest? Yeah. That's weird with Batman 50? Is it? Not spoiling anything? Well, I mean, I haven't read any Conquest. I don't know what happens in it. I just, if he's a different character. Yeah, well, it's... But we knew that already. I mean, like, it's not weird with 50 any more than it's weird with any of the rest of Tom King's run. Like, no, I guess you're right. Like, yeah, we've right. already had Tom King's Bane, and he's not this Bane. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, he is. he has a lot in common with this Bane. I think Tom King understands Bane, and I think he's somewhat reinvented Bane, and, I'm, and I don't think Nightfall but happens. But he's not way. in the 90s. But he's not in the 90s, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but anyway, so that is going to be everything for New Acquisitions, unless you have anything else. Nope, I got nothing else. All right, cool. Well, follow along in the playlist if you are watching these videos there for this week's Omnibus. We're going to move on uh, next to Geeks Not Nerds, and we're going to talk about something somewhat controversial. So look forward to that. And uh, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, James Gunn firing, because uh, I just can't help but i got to talk about it. So. Uh, we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about uh, social media affecting uh, people working in entertainment at large. That's going to be the conversation for Geeks Not Nerds this week, so look forward to that. And in the meantime, I am Captain Logan. I'm Eric. And thanks for watching.